Hello and welcome to World History Unit 7, World War II in Europe. Okay, so if you remember where we left off in Unit 6, World War II had just broken out as a result of the last straw for Britain and France, which was Germany's invasion of Poland, which if you recall, had been divided up with Russia. And that's where we're going to pick up. Russia, also known at the time as the USSR, signed a non-aggression pact with Germany. In this pact, peace was the goal. The Soviet Union, that's the USSR, also known as Russia, agreed with Germany to divide Poland and take Finland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia as prizes, as rewards for maintaining peace with Germany and not supporting any of its allies. This would be a huge blow to the Western forces, France and England, because they were counting on Stalin helping them out, but they would get no such help. They would be completely on their own against the mighty power of the German military. And that military was mighty indeed. When it invaded Poland, it was the first time it used a type of tactic known as the Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. This involved using fast moving airplanes and tanks followed by massive infantry forces to take enemy defenders by surprise. So the Tanks and airplanes would come in and shock and just decimate the enemies, and then the infantry troops would come in and just clean the rest up. But, not at first. In fact, at first, many people called it the phony war, not World War II, because in Western Europe, between 1939 and the spring of 1940, French troops were stationed along the border with Germany, and German troops were stationed along the border facing the French troops. And nothing happened. The French were waiting for the Germans to attack, but nothing happened. No shots were fired, no advances were made. And the reason why is because unbeknownst to the French and the English, the Germans were setting up a surprise attack, which would just absolutely devastate the French forces. That German sneak attack surprised the French troops so horribly that it pushed them all the way to the beaches of Dunkirk and if not for the British at the Battle of Dunkirk, the French military would have been completely eliminated by the Blitzkrieg attack of the Germans. The British Royal Navy sent over 850 ships, but not just military ships, civilian citizen ships, boats, rowboats, fishing boats, uh, pleasure yachts, whatever could float on the water and move was used to rescue the French troops, saving over 338,000 lives from the German assault. This was the biggest military rescue operation in the history of the world at the time. Charles de Gaulle, the defeated leader of the French military, was forced to live in exile through most of the rest of the war, leading his troops as best he could from the safety of Britain. But Germany, not willing to give up, continued to pursue the French because it didn't just want France, it also wanted to take the British Isles, England, and a series of battles between German and British air forces was fought over Britain from 1940 to 1941. It was only through sheer strength and force of will that the British did not give up. Much credit is given to Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the leader of England at the time, for giving numerous speeches encouraging the British people to never give up, to never quit, to never say die. And in addition to the strong will of the British people and its leaders, they also had the technology advantage of the Enigma machine. This saved countless British lives because it allowed the British to decode German secret messages so that they could better prepare the Royal Air Force to defend since they would know when the German airstrikes were happening and at what times. In 1941, unable to make any further progress and having to spend a lot of his resources without making any progress, Hitler finally called off his attacks so that he could refocus his efforts on Eastern Europe. However, at about this time, Germany was starting to realize that it was not quite equal partners and that Italy was going to be a liability. Italy, in its invasion of Ethiopia, was beginning to lose badly. They just weren't as organized or as technologically advanced as the German forces. And as a result, to save face and to prevent his ally and friend from 
losing a major war, Hitler felt forced to help Italy by sending his forces to Africa, commanded by Erwin Rommel, also known as the Desert Fox. He commanded the Africa Corps, an elite German tank force, to assist the Italians in Africa. And at first, he was very successful and won many victories, up until 1942, when America joined the war. When America joined the war, he was outgunned and outmatched, and by 1943, forced to surrender. But before we talk too much about America, we're going to have to rewind the timeline a little bit, jump over to Asia, and that's where we're going to close this video off before we go into how America joined the war and eventually how the war came to a conclusion. If you have any questions, let me know in class, and thank you.